Welcome back to part two of our UNC Tar Heels basketball recruiting podcast, official visit, end of the dead period edition. That's a long title, David, but the dead period ends midnight, May 31st. That's Monday. The next day, recruiting chaos begins for football and basketball. North Carolina, new head coach, Hubert Davis, eight official visits lined up right now for the month of June. In our first part to this podcast series, we talked about uh, the other four kids that will be visiting North Carolina, Will Shaver, Jalen Washington, Justin Taylor, and Derek Lively. In this podcast, we're going to hit on the other four, Deontay Green, Jaden Bradley, Seth Trimble, and Isaac Trout. Uh, we went in depth a little bit in the first podcast at the beginning, just about the period and and some of the things that, the, that will be learned, not just by the coaching staff and the players, but also us Covering this, I think one of the things, David, that, I, that we talked about was how we're going to learn a lot about Hubert's approach. Uh, how different are his official visits that he lines up for kids as opposed to when he visited when Roy was the head coach. There's a lot of exciting things. We're not just going to be on top of what kids think. We're going to try to learn everything we can about the way Hubert goes about his business and we'll report all of it to you guys. And to stay on top of everything, you got to head on over to TarHillIllustrated.com for just $8.33 a month. You can have access to literally everything that we produce. Dean is going to be going nuts on the football side with all the recruiting stuff that's going on. Almost everything she produces will be premium. And everything David produces will be premium, other than the occasional podcast that I do with Dean and the occasional podcast I do with David. So with that said, David, let's continue. Deontay Green, uh, six foot eight forward out of uh, an in-state kid at North Carolina, the number one. 30 overall prospect in the class. He comes in June 11th. He'll be the fifth official visit lined up for the month of June. So what are your thoughts on Deontay Green, his relationship with Carolina and his visit that's coming up here in a couple of weeks? Well, a lot of people think that um, Green, that, that Deontay is going to be, uh, he'll end up at North Carolina simply because of the in-state part of it. He's got a, um, other visits set up to North Carolina State on June 1st. Then uh, there's also a visit to Tennessee on June 23rd through the 25th. And, you know, Knoxville, anybody from the western side of the state will, will know that Knoxville is, is not far at all from Asheville. Uh, I grew up, you know, in a town in between just on the Tennessee side, and I was – an hour's drive from not or 45 minutes from Knoxville and just over an hour from Asheville on I-40. So, uh, and, and you look at the football players that's come out of there, you know, through over the years, yeah. uh, Pete Shuler, Leonard, yeah. Little, Carl Pickens out of Western North Carolina that have been great players to university of Tennessee. So, you know, uh, Buzz Peterson always talked about when he got the job at Tennessee, that they were Tennessee football fans and, he, he, they used to drive, you know, from where they lived in Nashville to go watch Tennessee football games. So uh, that's a close drive. So there is some competition there. Uh, I don't know that it's a slam dunk. He's really quiet on his recruitment. I talked to his high school coach quite a bit. I said, hey, man, <clears throat> I'm leaving messages, texts, calls. And he said, everybody is. You're about the 10th person that's told me that. So he, he's really trying to keep it quiet right now. But uh, – Curious to see if he's uh, – I think he'll still be around. I don't think he's going to commit before he takes the visit to North Carolina. And then once he does, how much pressure could they put on him uh, uh, from there? Not even pressure, but do you see what you like enough to, to where you pop? So I think that's another kid. You know, we talked about Justin Taylor being one. I think DeAndre Green's another one to watch uh, closely after his visit to see what he does. Let me also note that we're recording this late Wednesday night. The Rivals rankings for 22 come out Thursday. We're running this podcast Friday. So he may no longer be the number 130 player. He may move up, may drop. Um, you have any sense to what may happen with him? Just out of curiosity? I don't. I don't know how. I think Jamie's got to see him a little bit. Uh, but I, I don't know with some of these guys exactly, you know, how much that they, they have gotten to see them. So, I would say that uh, probably um, we're going to get a better read for it, I think, by the end of July. I, I just don't know 
I know that I would hate to have to rank right now yeah. because you just I just feel like you've got to see players live a few times. So, you know, once in July, you get all these set up where everybody's in the same spot. And you say, well, why can't you do it now? Because you've got, you know, everybody's playing tournaments, but they're spread out all over the country. You know, last weekend, you you know, you you got tournament, big tournaments in Atlanta. You had one Boo Williams up in the Tidewater area. You had a big one in Dallas. You've got them West Coast. You've got them Midwest. And and that's the way it runs all the time. So, like I said, you you in the last show we done, I was looking forward to July, even in that first weekend, is you've got most likely they're going to have Nike, Under Armour, and uh, – and um, yeah. Adidas playing on the I-20 corridor between Augusta, Georgia, or North Augusta, South Carolina, rather, and Birmingham. So it really makes it convenient to see a lot of players over a four-day time period. Jaden Bradley, wherever he's going to be ranked when the new rankings come out, it's going to be very high, five-star point guard. I think it's interesting, he was the first – Kid, I guess you talked to his dad a little bit to him right after Hubert got the job, and and they didn't really know much about Hubert at the time. So I think it says a lot that in a fairly short period of time, Hubert was able to secure an official visit from him. Now, he's at ING down in Bradenton, but he's not from Bradenton. He's, he's kind of from Charlotte. He moved to Charlotte from Rochester, New York, when he was in middle school. So I guess he's a Charlotte guy. He led Cannon to a state title when he was in Charlotte. So... I guess we could consider him an in-state kid uh, for the most part. So I guess that relationship has grown a lot to secure a visit for him, and he starts his visit on June 15th. Yeah, and I do too. You know, his, his family's all in, like you said, they're in the Charlotte area. Dad's a great guy. This is a good family. Um, I really enjoy talking to his father. Um, and I think because of those ties living there, he has to be – a, um, a a priority, huge priority, because yeah. he's a tremendous point guard. And this is a guy, in my opinion, that's going to go to a blue blood school. Uh, it, it, it's, you're, you're not going to see the seventh or eighth best program in the SEC or the ACC get him. This is going to be straight blue blood. Um, I'd be very surprised if he goes anywhere else. He's not one of those deals – where he got recruited into some school in the state of North Carolina or something like that. And he's, he's been at six different high schools in three years, which you see a lot of, it's not that they're very solid. You know, they moved, to, like you said, from Rochester to, to Charlotte. And we all know how well he played in the state of North Carolina. And then he, he went to uh, IMG, but um, it's a, um, you know, that was purely a basketball move, and they're very settled. And this is the kind of kid uh, that you want in your program coming from a type of family that you want to recruit. So uh, it, it, he, he's got a lot going for him. There's a lot of win-win surrounding him. Is this going to be a situation where he takes his OV in June, but you may see him back in Chapel Hill several more times for some other officials as yeah. he weighs Chapel Hill versus a few of the other Blue Bloods? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's no – a kid as good as he is, there's no reason for him to do it in the summer. And, and I, you know, even going back to this last recruiting class, and I've asked coaches and recruiting analysts and things like that, you know, for example, a lot of kids, let's say might even be in a 2021 class, might even be between number 50 and number 100. But with all these transfers – they had to go ahead and move while the iron was hot because, let's face it, if you're the 75th ranked player in 2021 and they can get – your school can get some guard from, I don't know, Arkansas or Auburn or somewhere to transfer it and average 12, 15 a game, they're going to take that kid that's got the experience. Yeah. And it's still – there's still going to be some fallout from that. I still think you'll see some of that this year. But here's the thing. When you're a Jaden Bradley and you're a top – you're a five-star, you can wait. These guys are in no rush. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to make room for them. So, uh, he's good enough to where, you know, he can call the shots. Seth Trimble is a fairly recent name on the radar. 
Carolina fans will remember his brother, J.P. Tokuto, who played for the Tar Heels several years ago. A very, very athletic kid. Menominee, Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, 6'3", 185 pounds, the number 109 player in the class. Uh, he's also in June 15th. they got a couple point guards coming in at the same time, which is pretty interesting. Uh, you have gotten to uh, learn, you've learned a lot about the Seth Trimble situation here in the last couple of weeks, kind of catch everybody up with that. And uh, what do you think about them bringing in both those point guards at the same time? I think sooner or later they've got to overlap. You know, you've got right off the bat, you've got uh, one coming in on June 1st, another coming in on June 2nd. Um, you know, Will Shaver is going to come in on June 1st. And then um, Jalen Washington. Washington's coming right in behind him. It's interesting that you got two point guards in there together, but some things just, you know, you can't be helped. Uh, you know, you're talking about stretching out visits and not only are you working around the um, kids schedule, you're working around the school schedule sometimes too with things. And, and I know that uh, some schools will give a kid's dates and say, can you pick one of these times? Can you come within this time? So I don't know, you know, what the reasoning is, but, um, you know, it happens a lot, so it's nothing to get alarmed about. Um, this is another one that's going to make a huge jump. Uh, you know, his, his AAU coach, Antonio Curro, believes he's one of the best guards in the country. And, and just reading um, what the Rivals guys had to say uh, recently yeah. about some of the players that might move up, he might move up. He was one of the first ones that that's names was mentioned. So I expect him to make a huge jump. The question is, you know, the Midwest ties. Now, like we say, there's the North Carolina family ties there. Uh, it seems like North Michigan gets a lot of buzz with him. Yeah, He's also going to take the visit to Marquette. So we'll get to know more about him uh, as this month goes. I was going to bring up Michigan because the day he was offered, if you wherever you looked, whatever network it was, even outside of our network, pretty strong lean toward Michigan. Everybody was kind of assuming that. Yeah. Has that tapered off a little bit with this offer? And him very quickly setting up an official? Maybe so. And I think it comes down to what you, you like I say, what schools, what North Carolina can offer, what how good a dog and pony show can you put on when the official comes? Uh, it definitely can't hurt. That's what I, I, I've said about a number of these players. It, if you get one of the official visits, it definitely can't hurt. Because I think if you get an official visit, I think you're pretty much automatically in the top five. So if you – I don't buy this. And, and let me tell you, I see a lot of these kids too. They'll say, okay, I'm serious about school X. Well, I'm saying, well, you're taking visits to Y and Z. Well, if, if you're serious about them, why are you not taking visits to X? So – when I hear kids say that they are serious about certain schools and there are no official visits, I dismiss it right then. So shoes on the other foot. It's yeah. got, I take it seriously uh, when a school does get a visit. North Carolina is getting one from Seth Trimble. We're going to stay out in the Midwest with the final of the eight visits that are lined up. Isaac Trout, a four-star power forward, six foot nine, 200 pounds from Grand Island, Nebraska, the number 66 player in the class. He's coming in toward the end of the month, June 27th. So we did talk about him in a podcast a couple of weeks ago. So kind of refresh people what your, your thoughts are, what kind of player he is, and and uh, him being one of the kids, one of the eight that's going to take an official in Carolina. Really a prolific shooter, stretch guy, kind of one of these Midwestern kids that you're used to seeing that, that can step out, the bigger kid. But – you know, he's 6'9", he's listed as a small forward, so he can play that 3-4 kind of combo. And, I, and I, the thing I'm noticing Hubert Davis really likes outside the point guard, he likes versatility, and which makes me wonder, you know, Roy had a lot of spots. You Maybe not as much with the guards with the two and a three, but a lot of times you – so we don't know. Was Kerwin Walton a two? Was he a three? Well, if R.J. Davis and – Caleb Love were on the floor at the same time, then Kerman Walton was three. We all knew Leakey was a bigger wing, three. But 
then you had your two bigs. Now, a lot of times we couldn't tell who the four and the five was because if you had Garrison Brooks on the floor at the same time you had Amando Baycott, you know, you know, it, it, it's what six and one and a half dozen of the other. It's, it's, yeah, I think they like to look at it as four A and four B. Yeah. Or so here you got guys' versatility between playing in the front court and playing on a wing, and Trout gives you that. Uh, Trout is, and I'm looking at my notes here for my story, so excuse me if I look down. Um, you know, Brad Frederick was recruiting him, and I think North Carolina had been to talk. I've talked to him several times before, and when Roy was the head coach, they kind of flirted around, and you always heard his name, and he's a kid they're going to watch, and they're going to keep an eye on him. And when Hubert got the job, he wasted no time yeah. and give the offer. And and Trout is aware of that. He understands it. So, um, and I think that's one reason. I think he knows, hey, North Carolina really wants me. He's got other visits to Nebraska, to Virginia, to Michigan State. Also, as mentioned, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. This is um, be interesting. Uh, can it get him out of the Midwest? Because he's got a lot of a really strong programs in that area. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, a lot of times it's tough to get those kids out of there once those – if you get a, a – Nebraska is a hometown school, but if you get a Michigan and let's say a Kansas, Kansas gets a lot of kids from Nebraska, Iowa, uh, you know, in that, in that uh, corn yeah. belt wheat belt area there so um it, it's going to like i say just we'll see what happens they have a visit you know ha how big of an impression does north carolina make but i'll go back again i think they're at advantage i think they've got a big advantage than they had before when there were no official visits because yeah i think just coming in and seeing everything north carolina university of north carolina would have to offer to a basketball player to me would be overwhelming yeah a lot of eye candy there so he is taking an official to virginia he is taking one to Virginia on June 11th through the 13th. Okay, Nebraska so so let me ask you this. Hey, go ahead. He's a, he's, Nebraska's way the heck out there in the Midwest. If a kid has two of his five official visits, it'll be the Southeast, Virginia mm -hmm. and North Carolina. Does that tell you that he, he's okay with the idea of leaving? If he's going to well, use two of his five OVs, come all the way down this way. I agree with that. Now, one thing I've noticed about Midwest kids, even when they took unofficials, it seems like a lot of kids that um, from the Midwest area that will, will come through Chapel Hill will also go through Charlottesville. And I don't know if that's always the case, has been the case. I doubt it very seriously. But I, obviously, we know what kind of program Tony Bennett's built at yeah. Virginia. So I, and I think when you talk about big-time modern-day college basketball programs now, Virginia's got to be in the top 10. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. well, yeah. the schools are very similar academically. They're very, they're elite academic, two of the best public schools in the country. I think socially, I think culturally, there are a lot of similarities as well. That might be part of it as well for some of these kids. Yeah. Yeah. It, it probably would, you know, and you would have fit in well places like that. I, I was, you know, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't allowed to Charlottesville until I covered a game there. So, <laughs> I, I, I was probably more like a San Jacinto Community College. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Some of my buddies, you know, I had a lot of kids, a lot of buddies and kids I went to school. I'm from Virginia, as you know, that went to UVA. A lot of went to Virginia Tech, JMU, some ODU. Nah. I, would, I, stayed, I stayed local. I went somewhere where they didn't even look at your transcript. As long as you could pay, oh, the, tab. I, I as long you could pay the tab, they're letting you into school, man. There was a recent transfer. That and all I'm gonna say is he went to an SEC school, okay? And and uh, he uh, and the reason I know when my first my first job with rivals was at uh, the University of Memphis. I did internship there. I really learned the ropes there. And, you know, very thankful for that opportunity to get me where I am now. And uh, this school picked up uh, a, a player out of high school. And I'm like, uh, man, I thought he was going to be, and he couldn't get eligible. And they said, well, why do you think you went to that school? He said, they have the lowest ACT requirement in the Southeastern Conference. And I'm like, uh, 
I didn't know. I thought that was across the board. I didn't even know that schools had different ACT or SAT requirements. Yeah, they do. And oh yeah. So yeah, I would, I would that's one thing I would be looking for. Okay, who was the uh which school would let you in on a single digit ACT score? So. Well, you covered Vanderbilt recruiting, so you probably saw that pretty cool. Other way around. It was the other way around. Yeah, exactly. I got I, I got uh Really got old talking to sixteen-year-olds who are obviously a lot more intelligent than I am. <laughs> if you, they, they see your typos, if you type my question through DM or something <laughs> like that, San Jacinto, but I was back in the day, huh? Oh yeah, well I, I was just in that Coffee County, you know, in any of those out there. You know. <laughs> wow, that's uh, yeah, they produced a lot of great players back in the eighties, early nineties. Well, that's it. They got eight coming in. Uh, just. We did hear a little bit. The 10, uh, by the way, there's 10 players in 2022 class that have North Carolina offers, and they got officials from eight of them. Mark, yeah, Mitchell, from eight Mark of them. Mitchell and Jairus Walker are the only two, and I don't know how much they've set up yet. So, uh, you know, there's still a chance they could get them. Yeah. Then you have other offers come out. I, I would expect more. I don't know about June. Still wouldn't surprise me if you don't get another two or three set up in June. Yeah, when, and we'll be on top of it. You'll be on top of it. Uh, Dean is on top of the football stuff. If you love recruiting, June is going to be an amazing month in both sports. We're going to have it all for you right here. Virtually everything will be on premium. So like I said at the beginning, shameless plug, but I got to send you all these places. We got to pay the bills, man. Just $8.33 a month. And you will be an insider because you'll get David's stuff. Dina's stuff and everything else that we're putting together because we have other staffers that are going to be at events as well. He's David. I'm AJ. Thanks for stopping by.